It's the JT Cho Show! Back everybody to the JT Show Show. I don't know if you can see me because I'm wearing multicam, but I'm your host, JT. Today is Monday, March 23rd of 2020. I've um, got uh, the uh, matching, yes, I'm a veteran with the Michigan flag on the hat, uh, veteran cap, and then I've got my multi-can uh, top, because you know I'm high speed. I'm so high speed, I brought in a special guest for the MJ episode on March 23rd, and Michael Jordan is 23, and he's the best basketball player, hands down, LeBron number two, Kobe Bryant number three, but that's not what we're talking about today. Today, on the JT Show Show, we're talking about hunting. I hunt. I love hunting. I like to talk about hunting. I like the thrill of the hunt. We're just going to dive deep. We'll probably venture off, tell some, you know, like little um, stories maybe from, you know, the days back in Canon. Maybe talk about a little euchre. Might get weird. Uh, but Prather's a good guy. Yeah, he's from Arkansas. Uh, he's ready to go. So I'm going to hit him up. So I'm going to bring in Prather on the JT Show Show. This is how professional I am, everybody. I FaceTime this guy because... Yeah. I can't afford a real studio. Prather's live in the studio. How you doing, Prather? That's good, buddy. It's good to talk to you, man. Oh, dude, it's so good to talk to you. You know, uh, you know, everybody, for a little backstory, me and Prather used to be real tight, and then he's on PlayStation, I'm on Xbox, but then Call of Duty came out with cross-platform, mm. and it's like a friend, mm. it's like one of those friendships that bloom, that re-blooms now, <laughs> you know, and, and then, uh, you, you know, and... You know, this podcast ain't famous or nothing. It's pretty trashy. I'm building my empire. Who cares if it never takes off? But uh, I was like, yeah, I got a podcast, and, you know, I want to talk about hunting and stuff like that, and, you know, who better to talk about hunting with than Prather? Hell yeah, brother. So, uh... Glad we could do it. Yeah, man, let's just, you know, I'll start you off with some uh, question formats, you know, and then we'll probably just dive deep and get lost in a couple rabbit holes along the way. Um yeah. So, you know, what, how'd, how'd you get started in the hunting, you know? Man, it's a, it's a thing in the blood, you know what I mean? Dad took me out there. I was in a daggum backpack when I was one year old out there boat hunting. So I grew up with it, you know? Lifelong history there. Yeah. It's been, it's been great for me. I sold, I sold lemonade one summer to have enough money to buy new arrows. I feel you. I feel you. I used to go steal arrows out of the... <laughs> barn off old man, you know? Oh yeah, you know you got you got to get them how you got to get them. I used to I used to I used to take arrows that you bought at the like you could buy at uh, yard sales or flea markets. I used to go down on the railroad tracks and just launch them in the air to see how far they could go and see if I can land them on the railroad like as far as they would go down. Hell yeah! But Everybody the, loves a good arrow roulette, you know. Yeah, but the uh, the good arrows though, man, it takes a whole summer of lemonade to buy those arrows. <laughs> I hold 30 bucks. Get you some good broadheads. Yeah, you know, that's not a bad price. The, uh, how's, uh, what, what's the next season coming up in Arkansas? Man, um, we have annual pig season here. Woo so pig. Year round. Woo pig, baby. All day long. He's an SEC fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, so what's the next season you're getting prepared for, though? Uh, man, I just kind of, I'm ready for fishing season right now, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The bass is about to come out for spawn, you know, right here at the end of March. And, uh, Small mouth or large mouth? Large mouth. Always large mouth. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll start. I usually start with dock fishing. Uh, there's this boat, though. One of my neighbor's houses, their, their neighbors couldn't pay the rent, so they're pretty sure they were just like, oh, just take the boat. It's worth the rent. You're never going to get the 2000 for rent, so just take the boat. And I really want to go stick a sign and be like, hey, if you're selling this, just let me know, man, because like, if he's trying to get, you know, if he's trying to flip it, it'll be a fish in summer. You got to isolate anyways. Oh, yeah. Because of no quarantine. You got to quarantine. What better way to quarantine than to put yourself on a boat? You're getting outside. No Everyone else is more than six feet away from you. Absolutely. And I don't. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. I mean, I've read reports that like you know some dogs potentially have corona, but I don't think fish are going to get corona. So crazy thing about the coronavirus, I actually vaccinated my dog for that. You can you can find this at Tractor Supply. 
It's the, it's the third round puppy shot, and it has, I swear to God, it has coronavirus as a vaccination. I swear to God. Yeah. I stuck myself with it the other day. I'm good to go. I believe it as much as I believe that pastor who was selling, I, I think he was an ex con. He was selling like pure silver or holy silver to, to cure corona. Like, yeah, let me just melt down my dad's necklace real fast so I can stay alive. Amen. <laughs> God bless him. <laughs> so, uh, so I know, I know one fun, funny hunting story. Is duck season your favorite? Is it your favorite? Man, it's it's duck season and hunting hogs with dogs is my top two, right there. I, I just, every time. I mean, I I have nothing against it because I kind of want to do a bear hunt the same way. Yeah. Because you know yep. bear, bears will sneak right up on you. That's why I want to bring a dog. But uh, yeah, basically, um, I it just I don't know. Hog hunting scary for me. I've never done it. I know Ted Nugent, he had hogs. He, he imported some hogs here in Michigan, and they got out, so he's having people shoot them back in the day. Hell, yeah. Like, oh, Ted Nugent, man. How's he doing these days? He lives he's, in Texas. Oh, nice. He has a big-ass nice. American ranch in Texas, and he's just Republican Living as ever. Living the dream. He's playing, race spokesman. Well, he, he – okay, so I had someone I, – I was listening to someone explain this. He's just got a bunch of, like, imported animals in his, like, on yeah. his property. And there's like basically no laws against it, and I was like, man, dude, that's like one of the most Texas American things that you can do. Oh yeah. And he's from Michigan. He used to own a house in Concord, and then his house got black mold, and mm. then uh, so he just said bye and took off after that. What are you gonna do? Yeah. Uh, what 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 what's so thrilling though when you uh, when you go hog hunting? Like, what's describe man. how that's like from probably like you know a, a day where you're going in for a kill. So, I'll give you a little breakdown. First time I ever went pig hunting. We, uh, we were doing it, like I said, we had the dogs. Everybody's got guns, but they're all holstered, you know, because if you shoot, that round's going to ricochet off that, that hard bone, right? So, yeah. anyways, we're out here. We got a bunch of side-by-sides, a bunch of dogs, and, and we laid into a mess of these sons of bitches. Yeah. And we're out here. I mean, there must have been 30 pigs in this big old, you know, 15-acre cutover. Right. And, we turned loose on them, and a sow got bogged down by the the, uh, the dogs. We turned the pits loose, and next thing I know, man, the, the war is on. You just hear screaming. I mean, it's it's just getting wild. It's I'm like crying. it's like Walmart these days. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's Walmart's probably worse, but still. So we cut out through here and uh, come up on a couple little little piglets just getting destroyed, and. Uh, I jump in here trying to trying to do the dig, you know, whatever. Trying to get the get the pigs out, man. And I mean, when I say there's some crazy ass meth head rednecks from Arkansas, there are some crazy ass meth heads from Arkansas. So this son of a bitch comes up with a 12 inch Bowie knife, and this this pig is screaming in my arms. I don't know what to do. The first time I've ever been doing this, you know. And he's like he's like hold his feet. I grab this dude's feet. He pulls that sucker, just goes to cutting, and slits this thing's throat, and it's still squealing. I, I've never seen anything like it, right? <laughs> and I'm, I'm just hold back like, did he just do that? This guy, this is the cleanest cutting Bowie knife I've ever seen. He takes two more cuts, <laughs> pitches the daggum head off in the woods kind of deal, man. And I'm like, I'm hooked. At that point, I'm like, <laughs> this was for me. <laughs> hooked on monkey phonics, man. Yeah, for, right. for me, for me, it, uh, and for me, it's got to be bow hunting a deer at – I need to get better at hunting deer with a bow before I, I, I got to get richer and hit those lotteries. I've always wanted to go moose hunting, by the way, but you don't have to call me for that. One. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that I want. Well, Joe Rogan, you know, I do a podcast. Joe Rogan talks a lot, and uh, I listen to his all the time. But he, he's killed. Uh, he 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 brings like moose hunters who like hunt like moose from like like with bows. Like that's so scary because that's such a large animal. But like you know that. One of the best highs in life, and I'm not talking about heroin, is when is when it's opening day and you've sat in the right spot, the wind's just right. It's, it may be a little bit colder than you like, but you have that buck walk right up to where you right up to where you wanted it to, and then you just draw back and you know you 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 be hitting targets in the backyard. You be making dime square like little like you just be like we used to bet dollars. Okay, I used to take tons of dollars. We put fives and tens up there. I was twelve years old and I was like okay. But first time I saw a deer, I was like <laughs> <laughs> like dude my and then like dude you can just hear your heart just just pounding in your chest. You got the you got the hunt, Chuck. Dude, you got the buck. 
fever and the, that buck fever is just, and then and then man one of the most satisfying things too is when when you just drop it on the spot i dropped i dropped three deer right on the spot and one of my favorite ones was my last one i shot it this was uh i was at my buddy's house and i his dad was literally like hey there's gonna be like five ten deer coming right through this trail so just sit right here and i was like thanks for letting me hunt on your property because i didn't have any this year and sure enough they, i was like man i'm gonna give up there ain't no deer today sure enough man these does start coming out five ten of them and i was like well there's the biggest one and i did i gave it that little you know and and then dude it looked up like what and then boom right and i and then it it took three steps and hopped over the high, hopped over like this uh, this drive i was on like in their driveway <laughs> hops over their driveway and i was like oh it got away and then it just died right there and i was like oh man good <laughs> nothing's oh, yeah. worse than tracking man Fuck a track. you've got I it, you've got like your buck fever high you've shot your shot you've yeah. got your blood so now you're coming down a little bit but then you're like oh man i need to go rehab because i'm hooked and i can't find it yeah <laughs> that's the corona that's, cough that's it, dude. so what? Uh, I've tracked so many deer, and I've lost, I mean, probably probably a good quarter of them. You know, they get in that thick brush, or they jump on that briar patch, and they do a big old loop circle, and I lost forever. I lost a trophy buck this year. I, uh, again, makes me cry. well, I mean, I'm not going to get into the logistics of it, but where I hunted throughout my childhood is no longer available to the means of my side of the family. Mm. And uh, I was away for five years, a lot happened. So, uh, so you know, I'm hunting on uh, my buddy's property, and his dad sits me in this tree stand again. This dude's like a wizard. He's like, there's one buck that we've been tracking, and it's going to come. It's going to be late. You're going to have to sit here for a while. You know, you're out there two hours before dawn at opening day, and you're sitting in, and it's snowing, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing some military gear. I'm wearing some boots that are good to negative thirty. I'm wearing I'm wearing this card hard jacket that's good till negative twenty. I'm bundled up. I've got scent spray on. I'm downwind, and I shot this buck. I gut shot at it and I shot it low. But again, I had this was like when I saw this buck from like when I saw this buck from probably a hundred yards away. I was like, Jesus, look at how motherfucking big that motherfucker is, dude. Perfect. I was in the binoculars. Perfect fucking rack, man. At least a 12 point. And it it takes like two hops in the river and goes straight in the marsh. So it's November 20, uh, it's November 15th, uh, 2019. And it's heavy snow, heavy wet snow. And I just lost a trophy <laughs> And I was just like, well, I just need to kill some. I don't care if it's a deal. I need to take it out on this guy. Right. And then uh, I know what you mean. And then we had to get him tested for uh, chronic waste disease. Yep. I was CWD. I was, eating it. It over. I was eating it before I got the email. <laughs> I was like, I got the back straps fresh. From, by the way, from Jerome Country Market. I'm not sponsored. But if you live in Michigan, that's the best cut you can get. Jerome Country Market. Um, talking about... I've been tickling on Corona, not my throat because I have it, but uh, I don't have it. But um, we kind of make a joke. So, 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 how about you tell us about that duck story and why you're uh, why you're immune to Corona now? It's it's not the it's not the cure for everybody. Don't be going out and doing this, kids. Don't do this at home. But so, tell me about that duck most story. Most of America knows these days. I am a I'm a proud carrier of duck aids, as some would call it. <laughs> and, uh, it all started back in the day. I used to see people, you know, on Facebook or whatever. You, you shoot a crippled bird, comes down, you go fetch him, you know. You uh, you finish him off, you give him a little bite to the brain and such. Well, we uh, we ended up going duck hunting. Don't ever do this. Just don't just do this. Right there. <laughs> don't try this at home. Do not try this at home. I'm going to put that in the, uh, in the comments. Do not yeah. try this at home. <laughs> uh, starts at this time. Don't try it. Oh, yeah. So we're in New Mexico, and it's my first year we're stationed at Canton, right? Right. Um, birds are flying all around. You know what I'm seeing? Little water holes just filled with ducks, and I'm I'm getting the, I'm getting the itch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I go out here, and uh, we're at this. I'm, I'm not going to give you my spots because that's still secret to this day. 
You can never get you okay. You can give your you, you can give all but your best fishing spot. But besides that, I don't want, I don't ever ask where you go. I ask what county you go in. Yeah. But I ain't asking. Where are you going off of? I saw your truck off of Brown Road. I ain't never doing that. I'm a seed off of Brown Road, but I ain't, I ain't gonna tell you about it. Oh, right. some bitch pray they're out there hunting on South 45. That son of a bitch. Hey, oh yeah, brother. He heard that deer. I saw that deer this summer. That's why I was hunting over there. Oh, right. he's hunting on Jefferson's farm. That son of a bitch. <laughs> oh man, Jefferson got the best damn deer I ever did have. I should have never divorced his daughter. That was the best hunting man I ever had. Damn about shit beer up my nose. <laughs> so, anyways, we're out here hunting, right? And bird comes in, swear to God, forty-five yards in there. That's that's long range. You ain't supposed to shoot him that far. Keep going, I can hear you. And uh, I take a couple rips at it. The thing comes in hot, broke wing and all. Boom, right in the water, about sixty yards away from me. I run out there and fetch it like I'm a damn duck dog, some kind of bitch or something. Right. And uh, you know, I had to prove to everybody I wasn't a bitch. So yeah, what are you gonna do? You can't I mean, be a bitch. I, there's video evidence of this too, by the way. Uh, took this daggum duck, grab it by the beak, back of the neck, and you just take that thing, put a, put a canine tooth in it, and let it rip, dude, all the way down. Well, blood I only got one. squirts in my mouth. Bam! And I try to spit most of it out, but you can't get it all out. I mean, it's it's yeah. daggum New Mexico. You know, it's radioactive shit. I mean, fucking aliens crashing and everything. Yep. So. You got the alien radioactive aids. <laughs> yep, yep. I got the alien radioactive duck aids <laughs> in my blood. So I go I go back to work thinking everything's kosher. And about day one, you know, I run into to roll call guard mount. Uh, guard mount. And my guts start rolling. And and it was so bad, I swear to God, the flight chief stops me and says, is that your fucking stomach? <laughs> Get the fuck out of my guard mount. Right. Turns me around. And I, yes, bam, boop, popped the UE, went on out. Disarmed, shit my guts out for two weeks, swear to God. Went in there, they tried everything, man. They tried taking shit samples, they tried blood. <laughs> Nothing's worse than collecting shit samples, dude. It's it's terrible. It's the worst. There's kids in my BMT that were collecting their shit samples. <laughs> and so, you know, MTI is not one to take you out more than one time a day because, you know, you're, you're cattle at this point. You don't need the sunshine that much. They don't give a shit. Yep. They try to plan your whole day one time out. We we're gonna, yeah, you got banned at two. Well, we're doing everything at six a.m. So, yeah. So these kids have to swab their shit for whatever reason, and then carry it around in their little web bags and little bag <laughs> and little medical baggies. So our medical appointments ain't till three o'clock, but we got like banned at nine a.m. and then like shit. they got shit. Just oh yeah, I have to. T- I, you know, some of them have to sample it on the spot, you know? Like, yeah. especially if you're shitting in a porta potty, man. Oh, yeah. It's the oh, worst. Yeah, there. yeah, man. So, hey, just don't do not do this. Don't ever do this. Don't do this. Tradition or not, don't ever do this. I've done it. I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend, though, if you... Okay, there's... there. I have two aces in the hole, okay? Hopefully my employers never listen to this. But I have two aces in the hole. One of them I've learned from experience, and one of them I've learned through uh, reading about it. Uh, the first one is, it's kind of like guard mount. I was in the third row. I was in the back row of guard mount. A Sor- I'll, t- I'll tell you who it was. It was Soriano. He's retired. I can talk about him. Great guy. Charlie Floyd. Uh, so, so I'm in the back of, oh, it was Soriano and Freeman. Both out. Anyways, so it was those two. Guard mount goes over, but I'm like... Right at the end of guard mount, I was like, I was like, oh, I got to fart, man. And I farted, and I just shit my pants, dude. <laughs> a little sharp, dude. Not like a turd. Mm-hmm. Just, and I was just like, oh, my God. You know, I'm just going to throw away these underwear, go free balling the rest of the day, and, you know, <laughs> survive, adapt, of overcome, you know? And uh, so, so I went to my flight chief, and I was like, hey, sir, uh, <laughs> I was like, I'm having really bad digestive issues right now, and I need to go change my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and he looks at me and he was like, yeah. Taylor, what, what do you mean, Taylor? And I was just like, well, put it bluntly, sorry, I shit, my, I shit myself. <laughs> so he was just like, he's like, just de-arm and go home. And I was like, what? He's like, just de-arm. He's like, I can't have someone shit themselves. And being, he was like, just, just, he's like, it's the last day. He's like, just take it easy. Go get some Pepto. Just, you know, just go, t- go take care of yourself, man. Come back. I don't want to get, I, I don't want to see you. That's it. 
So, kids, if you ever need to really go home, just shit your pants, dude. Just lay a, <laughs> lay, lay a dookie. I, you probably lie about it. You just go up there. I, I, I'm not going to tell you who it is, but he... I, I, okay, I have a fan, slash, and I've done a podcast with him, and that was his excuse all the time. Oh, sorry. I was late to guard because I shit myself. <laughs> like, I remember specifically, this is a funny story, I was working B-Doc, and, you know, you got to be there at 4.45. So here he comes rolling in at 5.15. He goes, sorry, shit my pants. And they're like, oh, man, that sucks. Don't do it again. Don't shit your pants again, you know. Get better. So, you know, and, and by the way, the people that he's relieving, because I'm not certified at that point, so they're just staying by and they're salty as fuck. Oh, yeah. And uh, they go, oh, you know, you better be here 15 minutes early tomorrow because you were, you know, so late. And he was like, okay, okay, I got gotcha. you. So the next day he rolls in 15 minutes late again. <laughs> and I was like, so and he looks, he looks the flight chief dead in his eye. And he goes, hey man, sorry, I shit my pants. <laughs> and I, and I, <laughs> I had it's gunk. Like Greg Moore's if I ever heard it right there. I had <laughs> gunk. I had gunk with me. And me and Guck just uh, died, man. We died uh, on the spot. <laughs> I was just what like, what, gonna, what are they going to check? Gonna, you yeah. want me to bring my shitty you britches? You want me to bring my <laughs> shitty britches in the work, you motherfuckers? Uh, okay, so that's the first one. The second one uh, is uh, this magic trick. I'm never going to attempt it, but it, it's this magic trick that David Blaine does, and someone's done it a long time ago. I don't know history. It's called the Human Aquarium, where people swallow frogs and fish and shit in their stomach, and they can feel the objects in their stomach. So he's like, what do you want, a frog? Blah, frog, blah, goldfish, you know? Like, that's what they do. So I read how to, like, how to contract your muscles in your stomach to force yourself to vomit. So, like, I don't shove my... Like, if I'm ever like, oh, that's food poisoning, I need to make myself vomit, I don't need to, like, use a finger. I just know how to make my gut upheave and puke. And and I'm with Guck again. And I'm and I'm over someone else. And they're smoking at the smoke pit, and I don't have my I don't have my cap on. Okay, I left it in the armory. Okay, I locked the armory up, and I went outside without my cover. Son of a bitch, court martialed. <laughs> so I'm out there, and he's and he's like, "Hey man, if flight chief catches you with that cover on, you're gonna get in trouble." And I was like, ah, "I don't care, dude. I'll just tell him I didn't feel good." And, and they're like, "They're not gonna believe that." And I was like, "I'll puke on the spot." And they're like, "You can't do that." And I was just like. <laughs> And I just did it. Like, it took me a minute. And they and then they were like, that's disgusting. And I was like, yeah, dude. Like, it's kind of weird to do. I'm never going to do the human aquarium. Never. But I'm still saving that wild card. If I really don't want to go to work one day, I'm going to stand there. I'm going to be like, <laughs> and just vomit right in front of me. And be like, yeah, puke, got to go. But I don't want to do that these days. Because uh, then they'll send me to the hospital to get quarantined. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That too. I ain't getting trapped in that hospital. I might have to refresh the beers. I've been through a few. Yeah, Prather. Uh, it's the best damn on earth. Prather used to play euchre with us, and uh, we we used to roll we'd roll through people, and then there'd be other. We 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 did this thing called fantasy euchre. I'm gonna put a trademark on that. Uh, we used to play fantasy euchre, where you get win, uh, you get points for wins, losses, sets, uh, all four. Uh, we had a point system. We had three seasons. And uh, so Prather used to, you know, occasionally be on the other team because they needed to catch, you know, my points every now and then. And we had rules where you at least had to have uh, six people every time that you played. So we had two people recording. So, you know, four people couldn't play by themselves and make up that they won 100 games. And We had some terrible people play Euchre. So sometimes, you know, you took a couple of L's here and there. But uh, we, we did Fantasy Euchre and... Uh, you know, there's a little drinky poos every now and then. So I used to be like, hey, uh, pray to tell me when, and I'd be pouring. And he'd never say anything, so I'd damn near have to fill up my full glass, and then I would forget how to play euchre. And, I mean, I wasn't going to let you be no pussy. That young in your career. Oh, and yeah. That's the man it's turned you into now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a senior airman. You can do it. Yeah. You son of a bitch. That's the E4 Mafia, dude. you gotta, you got to be able to handle it. I love when euchre took over that base. Because it was, it was. I, I, I can tell you what it was. It was uh, summer of 2014, and they're playing spades at golf too. And I was like, I, I know, I know how to play spades. It's not a bad game. It's just a long game. If you got four people and you've already, you know, blew through th- three hours of euchre, go ahead, play spades. Right. Play skip. I don't care. You played four hours of euchre, <laughs> but. 
you know, if you only got four people, you got to change it up. If you got three people, it's either rummy or <laughs> I don't even know. It sucks. But uh, no fish. So they, they played this one game of spades for two and a half hours. And I was like, okay, I'm ready for the next game of spades. And like, oh, no, we got to drive around and not be here anymore because we don't want to be here anymore. And I was like, you sons of bitches. Like, he played cards for two hours in front of my face and I don't even get to play a hand, man. That's like that's like teasing a treat to a dog and not giving it to him, you know? Yeah, you know, he I'm, checked IDs that whole time. And so, Let that be known. He checked IDs that whole two hours. So, yeah, yeah. And so... And so, yeah, uh, Ram, uh, I'm going to call, hey, uh, I'm doing a directed patrol uh, fence line, uh, don't don't bother me, you know, no, but uh, so another crew came out, and they were like, yeah, we'll play, and I was like, hey, you know, anybody played Euchre, and learn the damn jacks, dude, I might, just download an internet app, and it'll help you not cheat, and then you'll figure out the rules eventually, but when you're yep. explaining them jacks to people, you're like, okay, here's what here's how I explain to Euchre, by the way. So I was sitting there, I was like, who's played spades? And they're like, oh, we've all played spades. I was like, okay, so you guys know the terminology. You know suits, you know hands, hands are books. I don't know where you play from. I don't care if you play Joker's Wild, Deuce's Wild, whatever. I'll play whatever you tell me. <laughs> Five car stud or fucking Texas Hold'em, dude. I'm, I'm, more, I'm more of a fan of Texas. I'm more of a fan of that river, man. I love me some Texas Hold'em. With real money, yep. I, I never play yoker. I, I yoker. I never play poker for fun. Never. No. But uh, so I was like, okay, so you've got Trump in spades, which is always spade, right? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, okay. So after I showed him how to deal, and I showed him how to flip, and I was like, so every time this top card flips up, that's gonna be the first Trump of the round, unless we decide no. And they're like, what do you mean? So you're, you're, you're explaining to them how Trump works. And they finally get that. They're like, so it's random every hand. And you're like, yes. Every round is random. And then if nobody wants it, I flip it down and then you can call it. And we play stick the dick. Okay? I don't play none of your go under shit. I don't play any of your Canadian loners. None. The only two things I play, which is fair to this day, I play stick the dick because it makes the game exciting. And then I play um, farmer's hand. So if someone deals you all nines and tens, that's a redeal. And if someone deals another person all nines and ten twice at the same time, then you pass it to the next person because those odds are so minuscule, you know. Yep. Like you're. That's, that's just a culture. Like like a like a farmer's hand is like you know I don't know the statistics on it, but it's probably pretty low. But dealing two of them in a row, that's damn near impossible. But if you're dealing two farmer's hands in a row, you're a shit dealer, and I don't want you dealing at my table, so pass it to the next, you know? Shuffle the damn deck. So then we finally get suits, and then I was like, okay, so it goes, so if, so let's say spades is trump, the jack of spades is the biggest, it is the highest trump, so it means it can take, it's the, it's the, it's the guy, it's the number one. Yeah, he's the man. And they're he's like, the okay, right we understand that, and I was like, and then the jack of clubs is the second most powerful card, because it's the left bower, and they're like... Okay, that makes sense. So then I was like, okay, so we played a practice hand, and then I dealt another one out, and hearts is trump. So I was like, okay, jack of hearts is trump. The jack of hearts is the highest trump. They're like, okay, and then they're like, so the jack of clubs is the second highest. I was like, god damn it, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's the same <laughs> color. There's two. It. There's two. Red on red, black on black. I, that's it. Do, do, that's do you? It. I mean, you've been playing with me. I mean, you've been playing for a while. Do, do you play with any uh, uh, old old time sayings when you play euchre? No, um, I, I, got I, I honestly hadn't hardly played Euchre. I've played a little bit, like, on the game, on your phone and stuff, but yeah. I hadn't played hard since Yo, I got close. We'll have to, I mean, like, this sounds, like, pretty lame, but we'll have to, like, set up some time where, like, we're playing some Euchre on the phone together. Oh, yeah. That'd be dope. Absolutely. That'd be so fun. Yeah. I mean, I like, like, eventually, I, okay, so I made my way down to Florida. Uh, me, me and Cut still hang out almost twice a year. Uh, and then hopefully my Alaska trip to see Pepper doesn't, uh, at Pepper V and probably Katrina, that doesn't pan out, but you're, I'm not saying you're last, but you're, you're probably next on the board. Ten, four. And the only I'll reason take, I went to Florida is right because here. I like, I signed up for these emails and I'm like, Tam, uh, cause I, I put in cities like near my friends live. So I, I have this like little thing set up and it's like, Oh, prices, uh, prices have dropped to here. So when I went and saw Frankie, I got a round trip for like 175 plus tax. And I was like, 175 to Florida? Yeah. Give me you, can't, out, you can't beat that. Give me out of Michigan, Michigan in the winter. Yeah. No. You ain't going to beat that. But, you know, being from Michigan, 
I've been playing. I've been playing euchre since I was eight. Because you know, at all your family functions, when I was like real little, I, I wasn't allowed to sit at the table because I was too little. They were like, uh, "No, we're playing big boy cards here. You're not allowed to sit at the table." So at an early age, I got real good at cards. At seven, you know, at seven, Uno was boring. Okay, and and finally. At eight years old, I played with my grandma. We won a game. It was it was fantastic. But I mean, maybe okay. So some of the things my grandpa would say: uh, if the dealer turns down red, they want black. Okay. So if they pick up that red, they got something. But if they don't want that red at all, so I, but that's about ninety percent accurate. Because every now and then, you flip down. You can flip. You can flip down like a diamond, and you can have all hearts. Every once every once in a while. But I'd say ninety percent of the time, that's a true saying. Uh, I think it was Earl's grandma that said you can't get set on a jack nine. Uh, and the only time I've been set on a jack nine is left bower nine. Hmm. Because it's not saying left it's not saying which bower nine, it's saying jack nine. So I have been set one time on a left bower nine, but I've never ever been set on just a jack nine for Trump. And then um, the only other thing that we used to do is my grandpa if everyone passed fast, he would look at his hand, and if he didn't have shit, he used to order me up just so I couldn't call a loner, so he'd take a suicide, and he'd rather take two points than four points. Yeah. He used to play cutthroat. He used to play till I used to go to, I used to, go to my grandparents' house until, um, like, two in the morning. Like, I'd have I'd have friends on a Friday night at 19 years old be like, hey, man, you want to go hang out? Like, there's a party. I'm like, oh, no, I'm, I'm uh, at my grandparents' house where I eat some popcorn and play about two hours worth of euchre play some rage the cards and then yeah dude just laying the cards what's funny though is uh i mean like i know you have a wife so it's a little tougher but so you know when cut comes and visits um he, you know my mom and dad play euchre so you you've got the magic number which is four right there so when he when he comes up again i can be like hey man uh we can play euchre with my friends we can play euchre with my parents i i've got hundreds of people we can play euchre with because this is the northern part of the united states you know uh, so if you ever come up and visit, dude, we're going to knock out a day worth, worth of euchre. But the funny thing about Cut is, Cut's really good. You're really, uh, here, I'll, I'll tell you some people from Cannon Air Force Base who are really good at euchre. Uh, Cut, really good at euchre. You're really good at euchre. Uh, and then I would say Pepper, for sure. Um. Yeah. V? V, V, V's like a, a Philip Rivers. Okay. V, yeah, he, I, I was. I would describe him as. I would describe him as a poor man's Drew Brees. He's really good in the regular season. He's got all them records, but I mean, playoff time, you ain't wanting Drew Brees playing for you in the playoffs. Look at his record. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you the people who are trash. Munger was mediocre, but Munger called on a lot of bullshit that he got away with too. Know. He's they just call, if if there's if he's got three cards, he's called a loner. I mean that same, but I mean I can't knock that because my grandpa would bet on two Trump. And he wouldn't even have a bower. He would, he would just look at the table like, "All right, I got the ten clubs and a queen of clubs. Yeah, he's got all red. She's got all red. He's got the rest of the black. I'm gonna call it. I mean, uh, illegally. Okay, so there's this cat named Eric Corey, right? And uh, so I used to play euchre really aggressively, like like it was a competition. Like this is this is like a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. These are always on the board records, and they never go away. Um, so I used to play real cutthroat. Like when, the way I play with you guys is like I've learned my lesson that I was being an asshole from my friends, <laughs> and I came so I came pretty like less aggressive. So what what happened was we're in Eric Corey's house and we're playing euchre, and Earl and Eric Corey are on a team, and I'm playing with I believe it was Holcomb. It might have been Joe, but I'm pretty sure it was Holcomb. And so me, yeah, it was it was Team Red. Because we're both gingers versus Team Muggle. And I'm not letting it pass twice anytime. So if he turns it down, I don't give a shit what I got. I'm calling it. One Trump, calling it. Nine of Hearts, calling it. He turns down a jack he turned down a jack of clubs. I called it on a ten of hearts. And I'm I'm not even Earl's got loners. Okay, he's getting frustrated. He's like, you son of a bitch. I got seven a couple times. I, I said never pass twice. Never passed twice, you know. Twice. So the last hand, right? The last. I don't. I can't tell you what the score was, but I can tell you that this was. If we got this, whoever got the last trick, it was either a euchre for the win, or we needed one point probably. But I called it. I called it. They flipped down a club, 
and I called it, I, I think I called it diamonds, and I had not one diamond. I had, <laughs> I had four, I was four suited, and he, I was like, man, he turned down that club, I ain't got shit, so I gotta pick 50-50 between red, so I was just like, ah, let's call it, and then I didn't have a trump, and so after the game, you know, because when you play with some good, when you play fast euchre, by the way, when you can throw down your hand and say, we get one, you know what I'm saying, because we got to that point, where you can take two tricks and be like, okay, I'm gonna get the third, you're gonna get the fourth, we don't need to play the rest of this. We don't need to play every hand, but so he and you know when you play euchre too, you can backtrack in your head like you reneged because that's a very important part of the game. Oh yeah, you cut my ace. I'm gonna be looking for that son of a bitch heart this whole fucking time, you motherfucker. Because my gra- by the way, my grandma, she's a she's a slit throat because she will never let you. If you lead off ace, she'll cut it. So if you if 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 you if you lay down an ace, and she's left of the dealer, she's gonna cut it. But, um, anywho, um, shoot, I, I just lost track of thought. <laughs> uh. We're talking about luck, but yeah, uh, yeah, but, but basically he backtracks, right? And he backtracks to, uh, everyone's hand. He goes, you reneged. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, no, I didn't. No way. No way I reneged. I was four suited, but I didn't renege. And he's like, well, where's your Trump? I was like, I didn't have any. I just called it. And he's like, that's illegal. And I was like, that ain't in the game of you. Why is that illegal? Because <laughs> he, he was pissed. He was pissed that he lost, dude. <laughs> he was pissed. Fuck that fool. And, uh, and, and, and what's funny is uh, Holcomb was just like, he was just like, man, that was brutal, but I'm glad he was on my team. He wasn't mad at all, you know. Hey, man, oh, yeah. hey, hold up that chorus, man. Hold up that chorus so I can take a screenshot. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, this is the old silver bullet right here, son. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, to put that on the uh, thumbnail yeah, for, the, for the YouTube video. Whoa. <laughs> 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 not not going to screenshot that one. <laughs> After what just happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll talk about that off camera. That's not a ha-ha funny joke, yeah. but it's a tragedy, you know. Um, yeah, it always sucks when we lose one. Did uh, so let's get back to our main topic. Uh, so when 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 you just say that you know it's in your blood, what are some like you know? I'm guessing your dad hunted and your grandpa hunted. You got any like good experiences or stories from them? Like you know some real good things that they passed down onto you. Man, just just I don't know the the thrill of the hunt, you know what I mean? Like taking it seriously and, and the, the kill too, you know what I mean? You have to, you have to care about every harvest, you know, like yeah. from the squirrel all the way up to the deer, all the way up to the bear. I mean, it's, it's all a life. Have you, you bear I mean? hunted? I've actually never bear hunted. I, I want to, I want to. You got to see the tat? What? You want to, so, I mean, I, we, I, I, mean, I we, told you this. What, what about it? Have you seen the tattoo that I got? Yeah, of Never all the animals been. you killed. Yeah. I think that's yeah. dope. I think that's a dope concept. I mean, shit, I have the Millennium Falcon, okay? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I have Zelda. I have three Zelda hearts. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, I just wanted something that was important to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, and and if people don't know, uh, so his tattoo is basically uh, every kill, every... Every animal that he's taken the life of, and you know, if you're part of Pete and all that pussy ass shit, uh, it's not like we hunt. I, I, I'm I'm sort of against hunting for game. Like I'm I'm not I'm never gonna go on a I'm never gonna go hunt a lion. There's no purpose. But when you're when you're like when you're taking a, a family, or... yeah, when you're taking a deer and then you're feeding your family, like man, there's this moment when you okay, you're so excited when you get this buck right or doe, and then and then you shoot it, you get the kill, and you walk up to that animal. And there's almost this sense of like overcome sorrow and joy at the same time yeah. to where you're like, I'm so excited that I got the kill, but I am also sorry because I took this life. But at the same time, I'm taking the basic evolution uh, of mankind and all animals and basically taking this animal's product and then using it to feel myself yeah. so I can pass my genes on to the future I'm, yeah, it's like, I mean, that's that's what they were created for, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, it's like the circle of life, dude. And, like Lion King talks about all that shit with their singing, man. It, man. it is 100% true. And the thing is, like, people are like, oh, it's it's 
you know, it's not right, it's inhumane. We've just come up with better tools, you know? If we didn't ever come up with guns and ammunition, we'd still be spearing them motherfuckers. Yep. We'd still be bow and arrow. I had a bow out there. Yeah. And Turn like, throwing like yep. you, I mean, back in the day, once like the Comanches mastered the horses, they used to track buffalo on foot. And that would be so much more sketchy. Like tracking a buffalo on a horse when you see ranchers and how they hurdle, how they uh, have cattle and they herd the cattle it makes so much sense on a horse. But when I read that, you know, before, uh, I think it was the Spanish who invaded before they brought horses. These motherfuckers used to follow these buffalo on foot. I can't imagine that. But yeah. I'm not I wasting get back it. To no corner and they get them horns out. I mean, two thousand pound bees plus. Yeah, and 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 I'm not letting this. And then until and then there's a certain point too, by the way, that when the fur trade came, they were killing more buffalo than they needed because they were selling the fur so they could buy more stuff. So essentially, that was the only time they were kind of being wasteful. But you know. I, I, I'm using that deer. I'm getting those back straps. I bought a, uh, I yeah, bought like, and I used to donate my uh, hamburger because unless you're making tons of chili with your deer burger, because I, I always keep about four or five sleeves, but now I keep it all because I bought a meat grinder. So I'll grind up whole jalapenos with fresh deer meat. I'll ground some, uh, some peppers into it, some spices. So I reground it after I get it from the butcher. Cause you know, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. So I don't butcher my own meat. Uh, I get it at Jerome Country Market, but uh, <laughs> but yeah. So like some summer sausage or something for doing that for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can take your hamburger and pay ten bucks, and you can get uh, sausage sticks, and you can you can essentially pay more. Essentially, you know, they give you like let's. I think it's seven dollars a head for a deer. So for seven dollars yeah. a head, you get hamburger, you get your back straps, you get your shoulders, you you get everything cut. But then everyone starts adding on their extra. They start adding on their jerky, their summer sausage, all that other junk. And then, you know, like, oh, my deer took me $130 to process. No, Mark, it was 70 but you wanted 50 pounds of jerky. And yeah. that's why it costs so much. So, you know, I can take that meat and I can redry it myself. I can grind it. And, man, I make a real mean uh, deer burger jalapeno stuffed cheddar burger, man. I got that oh, yeah. I got that recipe on lockdown. And, and, and. Again, I do, I do listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, so if you know if anybody ever picks up this podcast or it starts trending, which I guarantee it won't. But what I'm saying is, he talked about this the other day about hunting, and I really liked it. I like giving away my animal to other people and friends. Is that your wife? That's the lady, man. Hey, how's it going? She said hey. She's like, I don't know who that is. That's that's Tyler. She knows. She knows. She remembers you. That's of good. Of course, she remembers. How could she forget Jack Tyler? Hey, your husband's going to be on the podcast. He's going to be famous. Hey, I don't know about that. You're really good at this, though, by the way. So if you ever just want to BS, dude, and you're in the mood, dude, we can just do it like this every time, and I'm happy with it. I'm always down. Dude, this is a good time. It's fun. It's definitely fun. Uh, how do you like the new Call of Duty? Dude. How do you like the new uh, multiplayer? Best battle royale I've ever played, ever. Ooh we uh it's still it's it's still a beta, so it's still got a long way to go. It is. They got they got a couple kinks, man. They got a couple kinks. The uh, zone closure just ain't for me. You know what I mean? They gotta Well They gotta figure have, something out. Have there. you have you worn a gas mask for it yet or no? Yeah, yeah, I've used I've used the gas mask and I mean it still closed crazy fast, you know I, what I mean? You got Well I I sort of like the aggressiveness. I can see why you won't. Yeah. Uh our only my only W was because the circle was closing and how fast it closed, it funneled everybody through a doorway. So I mean that was a good thing, but uh, I sort of like it's such a big it's go. such a big map though. Like yeah. you know I don't necessarily want the zone to close a little bit smaller because I ain't trying to have people like man nothing's worse than just dying at the end to the people who are just hiding in the center of the circle of the whole map. Yeah, I hate that. Absolutely. Yeah, these campers. If you play solo and you camp in a building until the circle is damn near final circle. That's not a win. I hate you. That's not a win. That's not a real win. Yeah. Uh, Doesn't count. So, and there's a lot of this game that reminds me of the, I don't, did you ever play PUBG? Uh, a couple times on the Xbox back in the day. Man, we, we won a couple rounds. Me and Miller, me and Miller and Cut, uh, yeah. we used oh, to yeah. win, we used to win, uh, but realistically the game never got to the, i guess it might be there now but i got on the apex train for a minute 
a uh, real big fan of Apex, but I feel like the Call of Duty has a lot of PUBG. Like, I, like realistically, I'll be driving around in a vehicle in PUBG. I mean, uh, sorry, in Co- uh, in Call of Duty in the uh, in the new Battle Royale, and uh, like when, especially when you get in that blue vehicle, that civilian looking car. Yeah. Like this yeah, is PUBG. This is PUBG. <laughs> and then sometimes I'll be like, I'll be in a hill somewhere, like sniping through a field. Like this feels like PUBG. Like there's there's certain and then like especially when you're climbing up those them goddamn stairs when you don't have the elevator shaft and you got to go all the way to the top. PUBG, dude, exactly. Yeah. I'm so glad you did that yeah. <laughs> because that's a, you got to climb up these 15 flights of stairs. Jesus right. Christ! Oh, no one was up here. Never mind. Uh, have all you right. have, have you played Plunder yet? I like I like plunder, but I I'm probably gonna if I want to get better. We finished second at seven hundred eighty thousand, and me and my uh, main cats that we we're playing with today, we got into an argument of how you get the most money. Um, so I'm probably gonna the, bank. say what? You land a bank. That's how you get the most money. Yeah, but are you going after kills? Are you doing objectives? Are you? Man, oh, I mean, you you've played with me a little bit. You know, you I run contracts. The whole game. I like to do that for battle for the original battle royale for uh, warfare. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's because it, it speeds up the pace of the game. Right. Hey, that, let's go kill you this battle. Yeah, and then I mean, then you got money for self revives. You got money for gas masks. You got cluster strikes. Bringing the boys back. Right. Exactly. You got to bring the homies back. If you yeah. don't finish with the homies, not a real win. It's rough. I finish. I, I mean, it's a real win still. But okay, I'll, I'll say it. when you finish without the homies, it's a win. But when you're finished and the homies finish first, then you're like, it's like that Forrest Gump meme where <laughs> Lieutenant, where Lieutenant Dan's in the bar on New Year's Eve, and everyone's celebrating because it's New Year's Eve, and he's just sitting in his little wheelchair. <laughs> exactly like that, man. <laughs> exactly like that. Um, yeah, man. Uh, but. What else has been new with you, man? Like anything, anything like man, that? Got in a got in a, a career now where I get to work with the craziest of the crazy in the civilian world, and uh, those are the tower climbers. Yeah. So that so that's been pretty extreme. Um, got to get on a couple a couple towers myself. You know, that's a it's a damn new experience for sure. I mean, you know, being in the Air Force, you're on the ground. You know, you say. Man, it's a perfectly good airplane. Why the hell would I jump out with it? You yeah. know, out of that that you go to the army and they're like, "Hey, I'm going airborne. Let me jump out and break my legs, break my ankles, break my back." You know, so <laughs> zero benefits at thirty. And I'm exactly. Broken. Yeah. Exactly. These are the these are the same kind of. I mean, you know, they're they're crazy. You know what I'm saying? They. Yeah. They're they're wild. Yeah. So you get up here, and I mean, this this thing swaying back and forth at 300 feet. You know, you're you're trusting. This little carabiner clipped to some steel, and you're thinking, "There's no way this thing's gonna hold me if I fall." <laughs> I'm plummeting 300 foot, and my my family's gonna pick me up with a daggum shovel. You yeah. Know? So it's, <laughs> does, it's does, definitely unreal. Does but, this slot I mean, pool? Is this is this yeah, your exactly. husband? But these guys, man, they're they're uh, they're a different breed, and God bless them. You know what I mean? They they do it every day. And, I mean they. They bitch and complain like everybody else at every other job, you know. But yeah, I mean they got the they got the best view, best office in the world. So. <laughs> How? What's the? Uh, do you know the tallest uh, tower that you've climbed so far? Man, I've been three thirty. Mm. Three thirty to date, and holy shit! Let me tell you what, <laughs> it was unreal. First time I stepped out on a boom, which is like where they mount all the antennas and stuff. Yeah, that bitch sagged about. About six good inches. Right. My two, my, my two hundred and twenty-five pound ass sagged. I clinged back into that tower faster than I've ever done anything in my life, and I monkey fisted it, and I cramped up all the way down. But you could not get me off that stick fast enough. You know what I'm saying? It was just unreal. You know, well, once you had the satisfaction of uh, making it down safely, what was a better thrill? Doing that or getting a lay down monitor and euchre? Ooh. For the for the dub ski for the dub. You know the only laid out lo- uh, loaner I've had in a long time for the dub. I lost because I I was a, I was such a rookie. I kept that sixth card in my. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. We I we literally yeah. Bitch, boy. I'll tell you, one of my best loaners of all time was in Cannon. It was at the Goat House, and. Yep. Uh, 
if you don't know what the goat house is, you're probably a millennial. But uh, so, so we were at the goat house and uh, Cut was going to Afghanistan and his ex-wife, who was being more of a bitch than usual, um, she said, we need to go now. I want to go home. And we're in the middle of a game of Euchre. We're in, we're playing best to, like, I think the party, I think the party started at like seven and we've been playing Euchre since eight. And it's best two out of three on the table. So it's me and Cut. We've been running through all these. We've been running through Michiganders. We've been running through people talking shit. Easy peasy. His wife wants to go because she's not having a good time because we're just playing Euchre. That's all guys need. Just give us some cards and some some drinks, man, and set us down. And, man, dude, especially you. Let me get that Coors Coors Light cooler that you kick, and it gives me a beer, and it says. Uh, The old Refreshinator. Yeah, the Refreshinator, right? All we need is cards and beer. Like, we'll play a little bit of music in the background. We won't talk for shit. We'll just keep playing cards. And women are just like, this is mind-baffling. How why are you guys not gossiping? Or just like, nah, dude, we're just playing some cards, right? So it's like, it's probably like 2.33 in the morning. We're all in the night. So, you know, it's like the middle of the day. And uh, so Cut's wife finally, she's like, we're leaving right now. And he's like, last hand. And we're down 6 to 10. Well, 6 9. We're down 6 9 right now. So he's like, last hand, I promise. So I'm like, shit, I'm going to have to bring a fucking partner in down if, if we win this and i get one point we're down seven nine and you think someone wants to sit at the board no one wants to sit at the board at seven nine down so uh we deal them out and i was like loner spade slapped them on the table and i was like see you later man have fun in afghanistan <laughs> gotta lay down loner for the dub ski probably the best probably probably the probably one of the best loners i've had i mean we were overseas too me and cut he's he's one of my Definitely top three best Yuka partners. Top five for sure. You're in my top five for sure. But um, we were overseas and these guys from Ohio were talking shit, right? They were from the guard unit. Fuck them. <laughs> Fucking part-time sons of bitches. Yeah, dude, the memes right now for the guard are hilarious. The National I Guard. Love them. I love them. <laughs> Motherfucking Kenny from Applebee's. You know, yeah, like, right. uh, one of them had like, Four different people wearing three different uniforms, and then the <laughs> lieutenant was like some guy from finance. Like, just here to kill us, and we're out here. And then we're out here, like, yeah, Humvees don't have car keys, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anywho, they're from Ohio, and then, you know, one day they get out there, and we're playing Rummy, and they're like, and we're, oh man, we were out there with, we we're playing Rummy for like six, we played a six hour game of Rummy, so we went to like some, like, what do you play Rummy to, like 150? I don't even know, I can't remember. We played to like 10 times the regular amount of rummy. So you could be down by like 600 and that's like first 25% of the game. So like whatever card games do you play? And we're like, uh, and I was like, well, I play Euchre. I'm from Michigan. He's like, you're from Michigan. You play Euchre? I was like, yeah. And then he looks at Cut. He's like, you play Euchre? And you know, here's Cut's always free. He goes, never heard of it. Can you teach me how to play? <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was like, oh shit, you know, that's dirty, you know? So we're, we're in the Fox Lounge, you know, we're chilling out. We're playing against a master sergeant and I can't remember the other dude's rank, but we're playing against, I'm pretty sure he's an officer and we're playing you against two guard guys from Ohio <laughs> and we fucking waxed him, dude, right off the board. We even roasted him cause I was, cause I, 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 I we were walking there. It's a 10 minute walk to the bar every day. Um, to where the Fox Lounge was to play, you know, you could play pool, all that junk. Ten minute walk there, and he was like, "Hey," uh, I was like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna tell you an inside joke. These motherfuckers are probably gonna try to score with sixes and fours." <laughs> and he was just, I, I'm not sure. I can't remember if you've heard of it, but he's, uh, he might not have. But if you don't know what it is, if if you're from anywhere else, you score euchre with you score euchre with ten, two ten, and you keep score with two fives, okay? And the two fives are on the table, so you. Use your face down card and you go one, two, three, four, five. And once you have five, you flip it over and you go all the way to ten. Easy math. But people from Ohio like to use sixes and fours. So they like to have a four. <laughs> yeah, it's mind it's mind That's fucking some Ohio blowing. State bullshit yeah, right it is there, it is heard. you think it's bullshit when you take a four when you take a six and you flip and you take a four, right? And you make it six points, and then you flip the six on top of the four. But when you flip a four on top of a six, you're at four points, and your top card's flipped over. Dude, get the fuck off my table. So anyways, <laughs> so they're at the table, and I was like, hey, I brought a deck you guys can shuffle. And they're like, and I was like, and we're using fives. And they're like, 
oh, we have to use fives? And Cut's like, oh, what were you going to use, sixes and fours? And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, like, no, man, dude. And they got so bit. butthurt. Yeah, so we yeah, roasted them right off the board. Two, we were like, rubber game, best two out of three. We were killing them the first game. I think we won 10 to 1. Second game was not going our way. Battled our way back up. I don't cut a loner. And then their guy don't cut a loner. And I'm like, oh, it's 8 to 6. What happened, guys? And the whole time, it's just like flag football. It's just like squadron basketball. Ranks off the table. Duckett said that. Yep. Duckett said that. Fuck you, pussy. <laughs> right to his face. I don't give a fuck about your bars. Rank ain't you. rank on the field. <laughs> ain't no rank on the field. If I cross you, ain't no rank on the field. Let me tell you something. Slow pitch softball. Ain't, um, captain's pitching. I'm blowing up middle. Every time. Every time. I had a... Uh, we had the... <laughs> I was... Okay, so... I'm going to take a little bit of credit here. Out of all the talent that we've had at Cannon Air Force Base, the only year that we won in the five years I was there is the year I got to coach by myself the whole year. I was doing it the year with Dennis. Uh, I shouldn't name drop him. So his name's not his name is Menace, not Dennis. Menace the Dennis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's not Dennis, but that way basically I got I got rank pulled on me and no one no one stuck up for me on the team. And they were like and then when they started losing they're like, Taylor, what's going on? What's going on, Taylor? And I was like, what do you mean what's going on? I quit. Like, I told you guys what was going to happen. I don't play favorites. I play everybody when we play shitty people. You can start the game. Regular season, everyone's going to play. It's squadron, so everyone plays. But when it comes time for playoffs and ranked games and close games, we're going to win this shit. We're going to win this shit. And I even take a vote. I take, I, we do tryouts, and I say, hey, is everyone, what, what do we want to do? We want to play for fun, or we want to win? You know, we're, we're fucking cops, dude. We're red-blooded son of a bitches. We're like, we want to win. So even with master, uh, one of the old mass surgeons that ran the team, who was crazy involved, uh, either if it was a certain guy that lived, and he raised dogs, that's all I'm going to say about him. If it was him running the team, there's a lot of trouble running it, but with me... I actually took account and said, hey, if this person, even if you're my friend, like, okay, don't get me wrong, I'm going to play Pepper, okay? I'm not playing V. I'm, 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 I'm playing V in right field. But, uh, <laughs> but anyways, so the last year I was in, uh, last year I was in, uh, I was already killing it at golf. I got on the A squad for the golf, so I got to miss work for golf. That's nothing better than being a cop and missing work for sports. Pisses off the regulars, you know. So oh, yeah. one time though, I got I got kicked off that team because they're like, no, this other person's playing. And then the commander's like, hey, you want to play with me? And you don't have to go to work. And I was like, perfect, you know. And I had an eagle in front of the commander, and he was just like, well, some bitch, good man. You can always yeah. play with me. You're always step getting promote. you're getting off, you're right getting there. off of work to play golf on my I'm scramble teams. Down. So so <laughs> that already started happening. And so what happened was. I think it rained, we got rained out for about a week and they canceled the last two games and they said that everyone's making the playoffs. The playoffs are only going to run for four days, uh, four games total. So I went Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And the command, I'm like chilling, I'm chilling by myself and the commander comes up and I'm like, oh shit. And I'm like, Meh. you know, and he's just like, he's like, relax. He's like, he's, 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 he's like, relax. He's like, uh, he's like, what do you need to win? And I was like, I need, and I like wrote a piece of paper and I like slid it across the table like I'm like countering. Yeah, about to do a drug deal. Yeah, and I was yeah. like, hey, uh, I need these 10 people Here's off of, boss. I need these 10 people off of work. So he sent his own staff to go, you know, go to, go to the main game. <laughs> yeah. And so then it's ALS, it's ALS graduation night for the championship. <laughs> and I was looking I was at these motherfuckers and I was like, I don't give a shit. I need you. No. You're going to go to 10 graduations more. I guarantee it. I need you today. <laughs> we ended up winning. And, oh, man, nothing better than winning a squadron softball championship when you've been playing for five years and losing to fire and losing to maintenance. Fuck maintenance. Ain't, ain't nothing Fuck worse than losing to maintenance when you're in there. No. <laughs> and it's my, happened to me four different times. I mean, my dad was, my dad was a maintainer. And yeah. he and he played and he played and he played and he played trap he played travel softball in Europe. Let me tell you, hey, let, let me tell you, let me tell you my career. One cake deployment, Canada Air Force Base. Let me tell you my dad's 
career. Spang Dalem, Florida. Right. Traveling softball. Hiked the Swiss mountains or some. He got some Paul Bunyan shit for some mountains he hiked yeah. in Europe. Uh, How many combat deployments he had? How many combat deployments? Well, I mean, like, badassery-wise and, like, you know, like Chris right. Kyle and all that shit. No, but... I mean, if I could choose a, if I could, if I could choose to go to Germany or Canon, I'm taking Germany ten out of ten, hundred percent. Like, I hate. Oh man, nothing gets me worse than the people are like, I hate Canon, and then they come back and visit, like, like just to see people. Like, if you're coming back to visit, I came back for New Year's in 2018. But that was, but that was to see a specific person. I did see you. Yes, you saw. We, we hung out. Yeah, definitely. I think we had a beer. We had a picture. Two. Yeah, we did have a picture. Yes, we did have a picture. Um, but, but that was to see specific people. There's people that come right. back just to see what's still going on. No, they come back for like the melodrama. Like I'm about to go to my first Air Force base in t- two years. I'm about. No. To, I'm about to go to Alaska. If we don't I, all live, I live 25 minutes away from a base right now, and you could not pay me money to go to that base. I would not do it unless it was for a homie, and that's that's about it. <laughs> how much would it cost <laughs> you to shop? How, how much would it cost you to shop at the commissary? <laughs> Man, how much would it cost? How much would it cost you to shop at the BX? <laughs> them 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 baggers. Let me tell you something. Them baggers at the commissary, all like. Vietnamese and Filipino, they hassle this shit out of me every time I go, and I'm. And, I doubt and, and what he means, there's nothing wrong with any of no, that. They would just, no. they, they, you would bag your own groceries, and they would just yeah. be sitting on a bench, and they'd they would still, pissed. and they'd still be they'd asked, be mad as hell. they'd be like, "Why didn't you give me five dollars to do it for you?" You'd be like, "Cause I'm not, I don't need it. Yeah, I bought ketchup and some steak. Right. There's three. All right, you know, a daggum oak leaf." I bought four monsters. I don't need your help carrying it to the car. Quit, t- <laughs> quit trying to take my ten dollars, dude. No shit. And then like when they were bagging the groceries too, they'd be like, I'd always make sure I pay with my debit card because if you put that cash back in your wallet, they'd be like, you motherfucking piece of shit. Yep. And yep. you're like, dude, come on, bagger, quit trying to shake me down for my. I just spent yep. nine dollars on commissary sushi. I don't have enough money to tip you four dollars. <laughs> okay. And I don't no, have it. Shit. I don't. I don't have it. You know, but but I'm I'm definitely gonna go on my first day. I'm gonna at least do the tour. Like when I brought my friends out to New Mexico, who came out, and my parents too. I at least drove them around the base. So that right. I don't really. I'm gonna go there once. I'm gonna be like, hey, let me see it. I will say, I was in Florida in December because you got a party in December. You know what I mean? Yeah. I went down there to Destin, and I went to what's that? Herbert Field. Herbie. And that is that is. A crazy looking base, man. I mean, there's gators on it and all kinds of stuff. There's pretty good fishing holes, by the way, because I, I went out there and hit them. Because redneck, yeah, you gotta hit them. You gotta hit them. I mean, what are you gonna do? You're in Florida, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, dude, <coughs> I went out there, and I mean, it's just the level of chill at a big powerhouse base like that is just unreal compared to Cannon. I mean, it is. It'll blow your mind. Blow your mind. Life changing. I might do it again. If I ever get to Florida, I yeah. need some cheap beer. Yeah, when I I didn't go to any base. I was I was down there with Frankie in Florida. One of my favorite things is like we I don't live close to a base, but I like knowing what it's about. Yeah. Like if I never enlisted and never did my subpar media my subpar military career compared to the greats that have served our country, I didn't do shit. <laughs> I played defense for five years and said deuces, you know. <laughs> I never did anything cool. Yeah, but You're a fifth year senior, bro. Yeah. But I, I like having that knowledge because right. it helps me. It helps me look at everyone's character because there's certain people that are like, yeah, you can't say that about that person. He's in the military. Have you ever served? Do you know what it's like? I do actually. Exactly. I, exactly. I, I know the people that have actually given more. I, I know people that have not made it back. You know, like right. I, I know. If you tell me what you do and you're acting arrogant, I just I just know what kind of a person you, you are right off the rip. Yeah, you see right through it. And like, Man, I'll tell you, and that's it's guys, not that's not all the military vets, but and or active yeah. duty, but there's a fine breed of them that take full advantage of. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, hey, man, yeah. I I gotta run to Target, so I'm gonna purposely right. go in my uniform 
So people try to give me free stuff. You know, I hate that. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. If I know some place that has a 10% military discount, I'm going to get that 10% off. But I'm not trying to get, you know, I'm not trying to get handouts. I'm not, you know, begging for food or anything like that. I'm just, you know, but there's certain people that just expect you like, I'm in the military. You don't have, like the worst thing I, you know, you can ever hear on the, here in the world is, but I'm in the military. Why do you not have a discount for the military? Do you not love your troops? Like, dude, it's a, it, that's a privilege of a privilege, dog. It's a privilege to serve, and it's a privilege of a privilege. The thing, the thing that gets me is like, I didn't join the military to be a hero. No, you know what I mean. I joined the military because I wanted to serve my country, and I wanted to, I wanted to do the best I could do for a bigger reason, you know, a bigger purpose, and that kind of deal. And these guys that they they go through that hero claim kind of deal as as the exact people you're talking about, and they want this recognition. You know, they, they think, no, man, just go about your daily life. Like these, these, it's crazy if you read these Medal of Honor recipients and that kind of deal, and you hear they they don't they don't want the recognition. They don't feel like they did. They feel like they were just doing their job. That They're more concerned about the other people that got left behind than they are exactly. with their stupid award. Exactly, and, and it's man, not a stupid it, award. It's a big honor, but for them, they're like, no, you know? yeah. And those those are the exact things that. That eat me up, you know, more since I've since I've been out of the military. You know what I mean? Like, like it, I mean, these it's these almost as bad as stolen valor. Exactly, exactly. I mean, it's it's they're they're taking advantage of an opportunity that was given to them. You know, by by hey man, good, you're in physical standing. We'll fucking take you. You know what I mean? But like they want to get the most out of it, and that's not what it's about, man. It's about it's about driving and you know doing something and. And being there when your country calls, you know, that kind of deal. Like, yeah. ISIS comes in and rolls through us, you know, or, I mean, it could be as easy as, as holding the door for somebody. That That's that's kind of how I feel being security forces was, hey, go do your job, have a good day. You know what I mean? That's, that's like, where embrace the stuff, the day man. starts. That, exactly. That's, that, exactly. I, I, I say that hundreds of times a day at work, and it couldn't be truer, like, you know, I didn't serve to get rich. I served because I was tired of what I was doing, and then I was kind of following, like, a little tradition, you know? Like, you know, my dad right. served, my grandpa served for a little bit. I had some uncles that served. But for me, you know, you know you're getting the chance to go out and see, do something. But, like, yeah, it wasn't like – it wasn't like – I didn't imagine it could have went better. And if I would have went to a different career field, it would have been completely different. But I'm not complaining about the career field that I had. No. You just made the most of it. You connected with the right people and you surrounded yourself with the right people and you're good to go. Absolutely. And there's people that don't surround themselves with the right people and they just bash the entire, they just, you know, they blame everybody else for all their problems. But, yeah. you know, I didn't get drunk. The toxicity leak into them, you know, like, yeah. They don't take it seriously, and I mean, they fall off because of it, you know. Like, like, as shitty as shitty as Clovis, New Mexico is, and by the way, I'll never move there, but if you're from there, I get it, that's what you're, that's what you're accustomed to, that's what you're born into, there's nothing wrong with living in an environment like that, I just like the color green more, I don't like brown that much. Let me tell you something, if you're from Clovis, New Mexico, the wind does not blow here in, in central Arkansas like it does there in Clovis, New Mexico. I'm just saying, I ain't selling central Arkansas on nobody, but yeah. I'm, I'm sure it's the same for you. How, you hey, know? when you drive down the road, how much green do you see? Man, I'm seeing green. I ain't got to drive down the road. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I live on I live on three-fourths of an acre. and That's I got a lot. <laughs> right? That might be more than me. I mean, I mean, I, I mean I, I, a little bit of modular, but I'm just saying, I, right. uh, I got three-fourths of an acre. And I got some woods, okay? And I'm like, wow, dude. And I live in the city, the city, you know? Yeah. And where my parents live, they live in the boonies. And they, mm-hmm. and then Sorry. where my grandparents live, they live in the real boonies. And where Earl grew up, he lived in the boonies, boonies, you know? <laughs> but, um, you know, we call him Mosher Tucky, and we got all of our back road names. But it's, it's like that area, as toxic as people said it was, Yes, it was toxic, but if you surround yourself with your crew, like, I'm not Absolutely. doing dumb shit, I'm chilling with the boys playing Euchre on a Friday night, you know? Right. Like, 
we're playing rock band till 4 a.m. in the morning. Like, you know, we're just hanging out. I mean, we're we're about to go smoke some ass in some daggum war zone here in about 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah, and and even though, like, you know, most of the time we're just playing defense and kind of going through the motion, it's important because, you know, if anything ever really did kick off, I knew that, you know, at one point, if anything ever happened, then people would be like, oh, shit, these guys are really important that we've just been fully shitting on. And... Well, like, I mean, I just I just hope everybody's got the same kind of experience, you know. I mean, I know they don't, but like out of canon, you know, if you didn't gravitate towards the right kind of people, it, it usually weeded out. Yeah, the bad guys, you know. So you'd have you'd have the the underage drinkings, the DUIs, that kind of deal. If you didn't have people that had your back and developed a trust level, that I mean, is, is damn near close to the family. It, it, yeah, it's not. I'm building trust levels to where if I killed somebody in front of you, I, you'd probably be like, hey, where do you want to bury the body? Not right. saying that I'm killing people in front of other people. <laughs> or be like, hey, man, he pulled a gun on you. I seen this. Yeah, yes. like like one of those things, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm building trust levels to where, like, I, it, you know, these, these, not that I want it for anybody else, but these guys I would definitely take a bullet for, 100%. Yeah. And... I want to. I want to know that the person that I'm trusting with that too has the same respect. So some people are like, oh, I don't play with you. Yeah, because I know that like when it comes time to tough adversity, you're you're gonna roll right over. Right. You're gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna crack one of these silver bullets. Yeah. I'm gonna tilt that puppy back, and we're gonna roll on to the next adversity. Okay. So to speak, the next speed bump. We're okay. Go right back up that hill. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 the thing and the thing about it is, it's like. Uh, and then there's people that just go, guess what I heard? Right. Guess what? Yeah. Oh. We call it so- the old turkey call right there. Boy, you get right up in that ass cheeks. Yeah. You get that brown on your lips and you just get. Mm, there's mm, there's certain people that, that, that like, for for no reason, like, this could be, for no, for no reason, just making your image bad. Like. Oh, look at this yep. party that's going on that everyone's responsible and they're old enough at, but look at, look at them all flight chief. And you're just like, why, but why did, why does your flight chief need to see that? Like, yeah. like you're just trying to use the image of having a good time against other people. And those are the snakes you got to avoid. I just heard a phrase yep. today. What was it on? It was something like, uh, keep your grass short so you can see snakes. And I was like, Oh man, I forget what I heard that on. But I was, it might have been, might have been the Joe Rogan podcast actually. I, I imagine that's the only place I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan. He's great. But uh, yeah, I mean, you got to have people, you got to have ride or die homies, okay? Yeah. And absolutely. And you really see your ride or die homies for the first time when you get out of high school. When you're two years out of high school and you talk to three people out of your class, those are your like ride exactly. or die homies. Exactly. It's not the third. Exactly. hundred percent. It's that's not exactly the twenty-five football players you used to practice with every day. They're right. your friends. You know them. You can have a good time with them, but they all your ride or die homies. Out of a hundred people, you might have one ride or die homie. Yeah. And I liked. I liked a majority. I liked. I'd probably say a good forty-five to fifty-five percent of people I liked, which would be the forty-five, because I could tolerate people. But man, the, the ones I hated, I hated them sons of bitches. <laughs> and they they would come out and they'd be like, "What'd you do this weekend?" I'd just be like, "Nothing." Sir, hey, enjoyed myself. Don't even say that. Just say nothing, sir. <laughs> Being right. a little quiet there. Sorry, sir. All right. <laughs> Can you leave already? <laughs> Trying to fish information there. Or man, nothing's worse than when you have someone come up and like, hey, what do you know about this? <laughs> what do you know about this? <laughs> what are you asking me I like that? I don't know anything. You trying to give me an old size office? I know. Right, no- exactly. I know nothing. <laughs> Man, I will say, like, stick to your story. If, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this real quick for every veteran that's separating from the military. Your first six months are absolutely, for me, anyways, this absolutely glorious. You are just triumphant. I mean, you, you get a raging boner. You're, you're driving away from the base like with the biggest smile you've ever had in your entire life. And then recording and, it on Snapchat. Fuck you. And that, exactly. <laughs> yeah. With two middle fingers out the window. How, how you're recording? Probably your, your dick. If not, somebody else is, you know. Yeah, someone, your homies with you. Cut came down. But, cut, but that, came, yeah, yeah. Six months after that, you have to you have to have those those guys, and you have to be in touch. I mean, keep up with them, man. You know, just, just call them once in a while. You know, get on. 
I don't give a fuck if it's Warzone, Call of Duty. Yeah, I mean, uh, like, like, snap them twice a day. Not like, that I just shit. stopped, like, like hanging out with you, but I was just like, oh, we're really busy. But then, like, all of a sudden, there's, like, uh, a new means of communication. Uh, yeah. Like, because, I mean, I'm in, I, we're in a fantasy football, like I said, we're in an all military fantasy football league. It's my favorite league. We manage it. Like, it's, we manage it like I get paid to manage that. Like, it's my eight hour job, okay? <laughs> Uh, but that's just the, like, uh, yeah. but that's ten people out of my two hundred plus people I met in my military. Uh, of my exactly. that I was exactly. like, hey man, I like you guys. Out of like, let's say I met five hundred people in the military, which I know it's more, it's way more. But um, I checked I check five hundred IDs a day. Yeah, easy. I, I golf three. Yeah, easy. Out, of, out of the specific like, let's say three hundred person flight I worked with over here, and this other two hundred flight I worked with over here. Out of all these places I've met and interacted with people for more than two weeks at a time. That's like 500, 600 in that, and I like 10 of them enough to do a league with them. Not that I, not that I don't like you, but this was a, this is a deployment league. So out of, the th- out of the 300 some people that I met during a deployment, we made a league. If I can handle myself in fantasy football enough to compete at any level of what you guys are doing over there, I would, I would we're probably buy, be number 11. We're buying so. rings, and 12 man leagues are hard, man. You know, they're just, yeah. they're just tough. But getting those uh, people ask me if I miss the military. The job itself, I could do for twenty years. If you said, Absolutely. if you said, qual, if you said, because I do agree with qualifying on weapons. If you said qualify with your weapons once a year, complete these online trainings on your own pace, and just do your own thing, come to work from eight to five, and then good to go. I could do it. Twenty years, too easy. Oh, there's a public service alert on my phone from the state of Michigan. But, anyways. Um, yeah, if you could, if you could do just the job and not the bullshit. Yeah, twenty years. Or, uh, man, I mean. Oh, by the way, probably, this is this probably is, longer. This, <laughs> hold on, let's take a pause. At uh, twenty seventeen, so if you are in the civilian world, that is eight seventeen uh, in Eastern Time. An emergency alert from the execute. Uh, this is from the executive office of the governor. The state of Michigan stay-at-home safe order takes effect at midnight tonight. Non-essential travel is prohibited. As necessary, you may leave your home for health and safety reasons, to get groceries and supplies, and for certain outdoor activities, and to take care of others. Wow. It's happening. We're all dying. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. But, Coronavirus! <laughs> dude, you know what makes me mad that, she, you know, okay, she did say it, but it's uh, kind of like a parody because someone remixed her song, and then yeah. it hit the top 100 billboards, and she's like... <laughs> Where are my royalties? All I did was say stuff rid- ridiculously, and I'm just like, someone. We've seen this before. Yeah, coronavirus. Coronavirus. Uh, there was uh, who was it? It was uh, someone screenshotted Kylie Jenner. She's like, uh, she's she's on her Instagram. I think she's like, um, coronavirus is real. I just want everybody to know it's real. And people are like, oh, thanks, Kylie. Thanks, thanks for letting us thanks know. Thanks for the update. Thanks uh, for show me, me your titties. Now, what? <laughs> now I, now I believe that the coronavirus is real. Oh yeah. Yeah, this, like before, before when I had. Kardashians done said it. It's real now, boys. Let's take this seriously. Like the only, the only thing you can tell me that's real is that plastic is recyclable because you're made out of eighty <laughs> percent of oh it. God. So you can tell me which, <laughs> you can tell me which bin it goes into. Is this the blue bin on Wednesdays, or I got to take this down to the street that does the recyclables for you? You know. Exactly. You son of a bitch. But anyways, um, yeah, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up for now, just so I can edit this, and then I'll probably hop on some Call of Duty later. Um, Ten, four. Uh, but uh, any anything you want to say? Any shout outs? Any you know? Any... Man, um, I, I told my I told my little brother in law he's in a really bad car wreck, had a uh, a mm. TBI, um, probably like back in October, and and Damn. he's recovered really well, but uh. He was going to commission in the military, actually. He was going to be uh, in, in the Army. So, um, God bless him. God love him. But, Dustin Lamb, Baby D, son, I'm going to whoop your ass in some Call of Duty later. So, get, well get your ass whipping britches on, because they coming. All you right, man. Hey, it's, it's been a pleasure. So, you know, thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll have to do it again, man. Always. I'll, uh, I'll hit you Anytime. back up. I'll hit you back up after I'm done. I'm going to just say a little outro. So Awesome. Yep. Thanks, buddy. So again, everybody, that's the JT Show Show. I'm your host, JT. Thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, jtfjbill.com. My Twitter is jtfjbill. My Venmo is jtfjbill. Help build my studio up. Give me some HD cams. 
Uh, I'm saving up for it, but you know I don't make any money off of this right now. I'm just building my empire. But thanks for tuning in. That's the JT Show Show. Um, signing out. <laughs>